Uh, hi Necro School, nice to finally meet you. How Hello. you been doing? Very well, thanks. Good to hear. All right, um, you're a, um, Witch Shore is obviously a, a band who puts a lot of thought into um, the subject matter of the lyrics. Um, what are the songs on God Curses about and who's responsible for the main lyrical content? Um, I wrote all the lyrics on God Curses this time. The first album, Emily and I basically uh, sort of shared it about half and half. Uh, this time I wrote them all. Um, the album is, I wrote, when we went into the studio to record it, I had lyrics for one song, and that was God Curses, because we'd been playing it live before we'd even decided we were gonna record the second album. Yeah. Um, all the others were written in the studio, like, just before the takes, like, just sort of wait until, I, I, I did have a go at writing, nothing was coming, so I just had to wait until just before I had to go and record the vocals, just sat in the kitchen at the studio, sort of locked everyone else out, just sitting there, Fuck's sake, what's going on? Um, it's, it's all pretty bleak stuff. It's all, um, at the time, um, like, I have quite a, a dim, apocalyptic view of the world. Uh, I've sort of lived with this sort of, with this sort of nervous tension that something really bad is gonna happen at any minute. Uh, not to, not like to me, like, in, in terms of like, this is, you know, something, a war or, you know, Bad environmental things and oil spills and yeah. stuff like that is uh, just one of those things you sort of fighting and oh hurricane. Um, so it's kind of informed by that. It's, uh, there's a lot of stuff on there. At the time, I was I was really quite uh, just quite into the idea of like wanting the end of the world to come. Basically, I was had, had, had kind of a breakdown and it, it was like. So, wouldn't it just be brilliant if like the sun exploded and got rid of all this so I mean there's, there's some stuff on there like there's other songs Breaking the Law is about people who you thought were really cool and just kind of uh, thinking that they're actually bastards once they get their hooks in you uh, yeah there's a lot of stuff on there that's just about misery and stuff uh, all pretty painful not, not like personal pain just like dark kind of frustration and anger and horror and yeah I don't know what you mean. Death, blackness. But, you know, in a, in a heavy metal way. It, uh, <laughs> best way to go, really. I mean, it, it, lyrically, with, like, with the, the language and stuff that I saw quite doing cliche, but that's because the band is like, in, in the best possible way, I wanted this band to be like total doom cliche because it was everything that I loved about doom and everything that I wanted to celebrate. I mean, I've spent, you know, half my life as a, like a doom fan. Like, everything yeah. got into it when we were really young. So I listened to like Cathedral of Wizard when we were at school. So, like, I wanted now to, to kind of, to make this band that was like a total, like, doom place. So, like, every single thing I loved about doom. So it's like churches, witches, damnation. Yeah, go for it. Um, and so that's kind of where all the language and stuff comes from that I use, just, just because it feels right for the music. Um, and I'm a huge fan of people who can write the really kind of straight up blunt lyrics. Like when Frank Hart was in Gallows, he used to, you know, his lyrics were all about getting your head kicked in on the street and stuff. Yeah. And I thought that was great for him. But I, you know, because that was the sort of life that he lived, like, I couldn't possibly write a lyric like that because it, it, it wouldn't be right. Because I've sort of lived this sort of, this little doomy little world where everything's witches and, you know, incense and Satan. And yeah. Sadly. Um, you've been confirmed to appear. Uh, um, is it Jus Oborns or is it just? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, um, well, you've been confirmed to, to appear at his uh, electric acid orgy at um, Roadburn 2013 in Holland. Um, can you tell us any more about this and just how excited you are about it? I'm absolutely over the moon about it. Um, I mean, we played with. We were invited to come and play with Electric Wizard when they played at the Forum earlier this year, which yeah. was uh, a really. No, huge honour. We've, we've known Jess and Liz for a little while, um, but you know, to be asked to play with them was a big deal for us. And to be asked to be part of this thing that is going to, it just sounds mental. Like he's going to have horror films showing, and it's, it's like it's him picking like his ultimate festival, basically. So to be part of that is really exciting. But um, I mean, what we're going to be doing is. Um, we are at the moment just trying to think how we could, like this is going to be you know, the, the biggest deal gig we've ever done so we've got to try and think of something special to do. I mean, it, I mean we've done stuff before, when we played at Sonosphere we had torches and, yeah. and stuff on the stage and tried, 
you know, we might try and do something like that, or we might suddenly come up with some other fucking mental idea, like so somewhere, like we, we end up finding some like medical skeleton or something, having that on stage. We, uh, but honestly, I, I don't know yet what we're gonna do. Yeah, it, there, we will have something planned yeah. for it, something cool. Sounds like a good plan. Um, how would you describe the sound of God Curses to someone who's never listened to your band's music before? It's a Black Sabbath uh, having a really bad day. Uh, <laughs> uh, crossed with, you know, a little bit of like Judas Priest and uh, Iron Maiden and stuff. Um, but it's very slow and dark. Um, Best way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like total like sort of pure doom but with this like really like narrow vision of what it should be like um, and just basically celebrating all the traditions and all the, the kind of the very basic ingredients of doom metal um, and trying to just you know par a little, little flag in the ground of doom metal. <laughs> yeah. um, what would you say are your favourite tracks from God Curses and why? Um, well, the song God Curses was the first one we wrote, and I really like that because it's from there that the rest of the album sort of came from, because that was the first one that we had, and it was lyrically it stemmed from a conversation uh, that I had uh, with a friend about the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Switzerland uh, before it got switched on, and he was sort of suggesting that it could create a black hole that sort of sucked up the Earth, and I was sort of said, well, so it doesn't matter. If, if, it's gonna, if that's going to happen, it, who cares? Yeah, you won't know about it. You'd be dead. Um, True. And it kind of said from the, like the conversation at the end, like, I don't care if that happens or not. But like, I'm not going to know about it. It's just, maybe it will. Good. I don't care. <laughs> um, and so that's a good one. So we've been playing that for ages, and it, that's become quite a, a good song to play live. Like, quite like. But also, um, like breaking the law. I think just because it was. It, We'd written the rest of the album that was really heavy and really slow, and we started writing the next song, yeah. and we didn't know what what to do. And it just we started having an argument basically about the push sound. Fuck you! All I do is play fast songs. Sound like this. That actually sounds really good. Play again. Oh no! Piss off! I was I was making fun of you. Don't <laughs> like my stuff, and I'm taking the piss out of you. And it sort of grew out of that. Um, but it became like our sort of. Tribute to like the non do bands that we're into, and like just by you know, virtue of being a heavy metal fan, you know, of our age, you can't help but the landscape has been sort of formed by those bands like Metallica and Slayer and stuff like that. Yeah, it's pretty except Motorhead. So, you, it, it was our kind of little salute to those bands as well, who maybe aren't doomed but are as much of a part of what we do as you know, Sabbath are. So, the, so to believe these, um. Feel like the Masters of Nothing is a song that I thought that everyone else thought it was shit when we were writing it and they didn't realise it was too slow, it was boring. And when we recorded it, it kind of, when we were listening back and just sort of building it up and building it up, it kind of made sense because it was like the slowest thing we'd ever written. Yeah. And, it, and it's really simple as well, it's only three chords. And Emily was really unsure about it and she didn't like it and she was sort of going along with it and hoping that in the recording it came come out different but as soon as we started playing it in the recording studio just the first time just to get like the levels right on the board suddenly every, it all just clicked and it, it became like a real uh, a real favourite for us to do when we were recording it yeah um, if you could replace the soundtrack to any film with your own music which one would it be and why? Threat have you ever seen that? I can't say I have sorry it's, it's a film from about 1984 I think when I've uh, been it was before I was born then. Yeah, I'd have been like six months old. It was, it was this BBC uh, drama thing about uh, a nuclear bomb falling on Sheffield. Yeah. And the premise was basically to show how, you know, civil defence and stuff just, like, no matter how, how you plan for it, you'd be fucked because it, all the sort of social infrastructure and things would just collapse and it, everyone would be completely fucked. And it, it's a really grim, horrible film. Like, um, is it like the first 45 minutes is sort of build up to the Russians firing a nuclear missile at us and then it goes off and it just goes from bad to worse like because loads of people die straight off and then after that you see all the survivors like all the people who were kind of in the, the sort of all the politicians and people in like the safety bunkers and stuff all getting radiation poisoning and it just carries on and you see like 15 years into the future and the ground's all fucked and they can't grow any food and there's 
people eating rats and things. It's, it's a really grim film, but it's so realistic and horrible. But that was kind of that sort of suits the God Curses thing about the Large Hadron Collider. It's a similar kind of vibe, sort of nuclear disaster. Yeah. Um, it's grim as you like, but you know that's that's my hot tip. I, I recommend everyone see it. it. It wasn't available for years, and it's been released on DVD now. It's a fucking brutal film. Like, there's a bit where the when the bomb goes off, you see this big mushroom cloud appear over Sheffield. You see this woman just stop in the street and piss herself. It's it's really you know quite brutal and harsh. And you see, yeah. Uh, you know when it turns into sort of martial law, you see soldiers you know shooting people trying to get food and stuff. It's a pretty gnarly film. It's not oh shit, not oh, particularly crap. enjoyable, but. Uh, all the times it's a sat rain, eh? Yeah. Should we, uh, yep. be stuck in against the doorway? <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty, pretty gnarly film, but it's, it's worth watching just to, uh, uh, a lovely, you know, beautiful picture of the future. Yeah. Um, aside from the electric acid orgy, what are the band's plans for um, 2013? Um, we're going to try and get on some Euro festivals and stuff. Um, we, it's been a sort of a long ambition of ours to go and go to Germany and places like that. And every time we've had the opportunity to sort of follow through, the has gone by the way, so it's only do that. Um, might start writing new album, it just depends how busy the rest of the year is. Like, like last time, we, we took six months to write the album, we played a gig, we just went to rehearse every week and you know, made riffs and shouted at each other. Yeah, it was really stressful, so next time I think we'll take a, kind of a bit more relaxed action to and sort of wait until it's ready before we go to the studio. Yeah. Right. Um, last question then. Um, is there an, a, a concept or an image that you're trying to be, uh, portray with the band's name, Witch Sorrow? Yeah, like if you imagine... Uh, the, the whole point of the band is that it's, uh, like, all things sort of doomed, it's like the, the whole idea of Doom to me is this, like, kind of this idea that you are totally fucked. Um, it's quite nihilistic. And so I think... The idea of this sort of, you know, on which is misery being on on, on a fire and tied to a stake and things and actually killed for no reason and being sort of bamboozled into it is like when, when the the only thing you can look for is dying is quite a doomy thing. Uh, and that was, I mean, it was a phrase that came to me that seemed to make sense. It was just like when I I'm a good band name. Uh, but really, yeah, that's it, like, just the idea of being that fucked. Um, and, you know, things just go from bad to worse, really, uh, which you know, they are for all of us. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks for your time, Necro Thank School. You very much, sir. And uh, have a good set later on in the festival. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. You're welcome.